In this video, we're going to talk about the SIR model as applied to market penetration. So let's suppose you've just come out with a wonderful new phone app. You want to have lots of users, and you are hoping that your users as a function of time just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, that it goes viral. Of course, at some point, you're going to run out of people to talk into using your, your app, and eventually they're going to get tired of using it. But you're going to have a curve that looks something like that. If you're lucky. If you're not lucky, you're going to have a curve that looks something like that. It just fizzles from the start. So how can you get it to look like that and not look like that? What are the things that make some things succeed and others fail? For that, we're going to have to come up with a mathematical model. So what we do is we need to make a model. And the thing about a model is it needs to be simple enough that you can actually solve it. If you have a model with a thousand different variables, that's hopeless. It doesn't do anybody any good. But it still has to be realistic. And determining what is realistic, what are the important things that you need to model, and what are the things that you're allowed to just ignore, that requires some knowledge of business. Also requires some knowledge of math. The second stage, we're going to analyze the model. Given our parameters, we're going to run things, and our initial conditions, we're going to run things and see what happens. And then we're going to interpret the results. If such and such function has such and such value at such and such time, what does that mean for your business? And finally, we're going to adjust our strategy using both math and business sense in order to achieve the best possible result. So what's the model? We're going to take all the people in the world well, at least all the people who might conceivably be customers someday, and break a bump into three classes. We have the potential users. Those are the people who aren't using your product, but they might someday. We have the active users. Those are the ones who are your customers today. And we have the rejected users. Those are the ones that have looked at your product and said, uh-uh, it's not for me. They're not your customers today. They will never be your customers. And we refer to them by the letters S, I, and R. Now, you want, might wonder, why S, I, and R for potential, active, and rejected? Well, that comes from the, SI, the model as applied to disease spread, which I'll talk about in a separate video. But for now, S is potential users, I is active users, and R is rejected users. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the rates of change. How fast are S, I, and R changing? We call those rates of change S prime. I prime and R prime as a function of S, I, and R. That's what we want to figure out. So we've got these three classes of customers, and over time, some potential users might adopt the product and become active users. On the other hand, some active users may discard the product and become rejected users. We have to understand how fast this happens, how fast that happens, and if you put those two effects together, we'll understand our system. So let's look at the people who abandon our uh, thing first. So we have a, a process of attrition, where active users give up the product and become rejected users. Have a product that an average person uses for tea days. It's interesting enough to use for a month, but after a month you get tired of it and you move on to something else. Well, if an average person uses it for tea days, then a fraction of 1 over t of your users are on their last day. So the number of people who are going to abandon you tomorrow is 1 over t times the number of users you have today. So the rate at which active users become rejected users is b, which is 1 over t, times the number of active users. Next, we look at transmission. We don't have enough money to advertise, so new users become active users only by word of mouth. We're hoping that our app goes viral. Now, the rate at which people, active users, tell potential users about it is proportional to how many active users are out there talking. It's also proportional to how many potential users are out there listening. So the rate of transmission is some constant times the number of potentials times the number of actives. 
This constant is called the transmission coefficient. This constant is called the attrition coefficient. And now we've got our model. We have equations for S, I, and R. The, we lose potentials at a rate A, S, I as they become actives. We gain actives at a rate A, S, I, but we lose them at a rate B, I. We gain rejecteds at a rate B, I. A is the transmission coefficient. It's a little complicated to figure out what it is. B is the attrition coefficient, and that's easier to understand. It's one over the average amount of time that a, that a customer keeps using a project, product before getting tired of it. And T is the average user length. And that's it.